Welcome to the Successful Home Inspector Podcast, where we discuss everything you need to know about home inspection from A to Z. Brought to you by Preston Sandlin and Home Inspection Carolina. We're here to share some success stories and some not so successful stories, some things we can all learn from, and maybe just maybe we can help each other and raise the profession. So sit back, turn up the volume and enjoy. Now, here's your host of the Successful Home Inspector Podcast, Preston Sandlin. Hey, home inspectors out there, I'm going to tell you a creative, inexpensive way to increase your business massively. Go to homeinspectionflyers.com and get the flyers. You get five flyers a month. You customize them to yourself. You just They're turnkey, they're creative, and it's $29 a month for five flyers. That's less than $6 a flyer. And they are done by yours truly, Preston Sandlin, and I am a creative guy, especially when I don't take my medication. But uh, I come up with some crazy stuff. It works for my business. I went from one inspector to seven inspectors with this strategy alone. So, again, for $29.95, you get five flyers. I do one per week. Um, I send them off to get uh, copied uh, on, on the Internet. I can get them for about seven cents a piece, and I put them out in the boxes when I do my candy run. Works fantastic. Homeinspectionflyers.com. Thanks. All right, listeners. Well, I have a uh, repeat here. Uh, I, uh, I I think it was episode 23, 24, something like that. And uh, I, you guys all, this guy needs no introduction. Everybody who's a home inspector probably knows this guy. And uh, we recently saw each other down at uh, ISN. I have uh, Nick Gramico. How are you doing this evening, Nick? Uh, real well today, Preston. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Nick, um, just in case there's a couple people that may be listening to this episode that didn't hear the episode before, um, can you tell us a little bit uh, about your background and how you got into home inspection and, and how you started the Internet, if you don't mind? Uh, well, I was poor, <laughs> and um, I went broke in another business, and all I had was a pen and paper and two kids to feed. And so I went into the home inspection business, and um, I made a lot of money in the home inspection business, but I realized that we didn't have a trade association at the time. Right. Um, and so I knew real quick that uh, the industry really needed one. And then when uh, Al Gore invented the Internet, I um, <laughs> really got Internet off the ground. And today it is the first trade association in human history that wrapped the planet Earth. We now have operations in 65 countries in nine languages. Our website is 280,000 pages long, 1,400 governmental approvals, and a 1.5 million post message board. Awesome, awesome. And you have, is it, it's all something like 17,000 members, I think, something like that? Um, the U.S. and Canada, we have 17,317 as of right now. Awesome, awesome. Now, um, now Ben Gramico is your brother, right? Were you guys in business together doing home inspections, or how? How? What was the dynamic there? Right, he was. Um, so when I started out, I I brought in other crews. Within three months, I had four crews, and my brother Ben ran one of them. Um, my brother Ben has all the pedigrees. He has a couple of college degrees in education, um, which is why he's our the head of our education department. He has all the pedigrees. He's licensed in every state to be a, a teacher, and he's a has a school teacher certificate and uh, a university teacher certificate and all that stuff. And so all the boards um, that license home inspectors also approve him and his webinars and his courses that he develops for home inspectors. Um, he's approved by just about everybody that approves inspection instructors. Awesome. Um, I'm a high school dropout, so the two of us are a little bit different. Man, you know how many people are on the Forbes 400 that, you know, it's funny. You know, my daughter, I have two daughters, and you probably know from Facebook, 
And uh, my my wife is big into uh, you know school and got to go to a good college and all that. <laughs> and she keeps saying, "Look at Daddy. He didn't go to a good college and he's done well better than most of the people we know." <laughs> and it's sort of messing yeah. up our argument, you know. But that's all. Uh, so, it's, it's funny thing. So I mean, my fiance has four college degrees. She has a uh, a degree in linguistics, a degree in global business management, a degree, a degree in uh, hospitality management, and an MBA, and speaks six languages. So I can barely speak English. <laughs> but, you know, it's awesome. I, I think uh, – I mean, I, there's nothing wrong with college, and I'm not talking bad about it, but it's just – you know, I tell my daughter, I said, you know, somebody else made up that. Somebody else made that and, and made this set of rules and things that you go through. Why don't you be the person who makes the college? <laughs> you know, yeah. make, you know, think about it from the outside. And that's sort of what you've done here with the Internachi. Um, now, let me ask you something, Nick. Were you, were, was you guys, was your home inspection business in Boulder as well? And then you started Internachi there? Or? No, so we had a home inspection business um, out in Philadelphia. Oh, okay. And um, and I made a lot of money. I, I'm the, of course, I worked seven days a week. Um, the worst day I ever had, I took him a thousand dollars. I did two inspections every day of my life uh, for five and a half years. I uh, fed my kids. I sent them to private school, and I wound up with almost a million bucks in savings in mm-hmm. only five and a half years in that business. Um, after I sold the company, which had uh, four crews um, of inspectors that put me uh, over a million dollars in savings, which for a guy with uh, really no formal education and who had, had just started a home inspection business five and a half years earlier, um, I thought that was pretty good. No, that is good. So then, what? What did, did, you, what, did you did you just did you have a connection in Boulder? How, how did you wind up in Colorado? Oh, so um, once we formed Internachi, um, I realized that I need tech support. Right. And I could get it in Boulder uh, easily. Okay. And I'd either have to go into Center City, Philly, Philly to get it, or I'd have to go to Boulder. And, in fact, Internachi's IT department is still headquartered in Philadelphia. So I brought half my crew out to Boulder, Colorado, and here it's very easy easy to get uh, technically proficient people. People understand the web programming um, and things of that nature. I would say almost everybody that works for me is a, is a geek. <laughs> a geek. Geeks make a lot of money. Uh, well, so now about what year was this that you made this move, and what year did you found uh, uh, InterNACHI? Oh, I think were, we've been at it now uh, 22 years. Altogether, so, so nine, uh, 1995 ish, sometime in there. Yeah, I mean we weren't much a long time ago, and uh, it, it took a long time to get this far. Um, right. It didn't happen overnight. My home inspection career and uh, in my home inspection business, that success happened basically overnight. Within three months of moving to Philadelphia, I, I was. Um, I was making a lot of money. I was making oh. 300 grand a year or more. That's working every day except for Christmas morning, but though. Um, so that's the, one of the one of the things is it takes you know home inspection businesses work, but um, a lot I feel a lot of people in my industry work really hard, but they don't know how to end up with net margin. In other words, right. they often work a whole career in the home inspection business. They turn a lot of dollars but they don't have anything uh, to show for it. So almost everything I did with InterNACHI does two things. Either it helps inspectors make more money or it helps inspectors save money. Right. And so that the two combined increase your margin. And that's the only yeah. reason to be in business is to make money Absolutely. and not to just do work. So if you wanted to, uh, to do work, you could just – there's a lot of things you could do that, that don't pay. Yeah, but, sure. Um, the idea is to, is to have something to show for it at the end of your career. Right. And so almost everything I do at InterNACHI, uh tries to um, – is really focused on profit for the okay. home inspector. 
Awesome. Well, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, maybe some of the things that you've added uh, since the last time we talked, which was uh, probably a little over a year ago. And one of the big things I know that you've added, because I've seen it, is your House of Horrors. T- tell us about the House of Horrors. So um, eight years ago, I uh, I announced on in one of our newspapers that I came up with this idea that I, we should build a whole house that has thousands of defects and put it under one roof and allow inspectors to go through it. And the right. reason is, is because back then we started to see multi-inspector firms grow, and the complaints that we were getting from the owners of these multi, uh, multi-inspection firms, multi-inspector firms, is that it was hard to train the guys to get them up to speed. Right. The ride-alongs weren't working on the inspector side either because even in states that require it, um, a lot of times they'll go out with an inspector and the house is in fairly decent shape. So they only stumble across 10 or 12 defects. And then on the next ride-along, they stumble across 10 or 12, and 10 of them are the same as the one from the house they just did in the morning. So right. they're not really getting anything um, yeah. robust out of it. So I right. built an right. entire two-story house that has literally thousands of defects in it. It has so many defects you can't get through it in one day. Can you imagine going to uh, a house that's designed to make you just sweat? I mean, <laughs> you cannot find all these defects. Appeal the house is pretty tricky. It's got a crawl space. The floor between the crawl space and the first floor is still great so that the instructors can look down at them, at the students who use sort of uh, car mechanic crawlers to, to go underneath the crawl space. We have six different types of roof uh, structures and then about 25 different roof coverings, siding, plumbing, electrical. It's all one big nightmare. It's got a 300-gallon <laughs> water tank that's actually – it's an actually pressurized house that has real water in it. Some of the circuits are live. Um, so the, the inspector that comes here, they can come here for the whole day and spend it in that house. And they really come away with a century of home inspection experience. And the house is even tricky. There's a lot of things that are, are wrong in the house, of course, but there are some things in the house that are right that look wrong. Right, right. Um, so when they come out of, um, we call it a, the ultimate ride-along. When they come out of the House of Horrors after a full day here, um, it's like they've been in business for many, many years. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. While you were talking about it, I was just thinking of there's some way I could get all my guys out there. Is there like a hotel close by? I've, I've never been. I need to I need to make the trip out there. Uh, yeah, so we cut a deal with a brand-new hotel here. Um and of course, the the um, the whole complex has much more than just a house of horrors, and it's all free. We have a legal department here, so if you have any legal questions or need any legal work done while you're here, bring it here. And Mark Cohen, uh, arguably the best attorney in the inspection industry, works now full time for us. Um, if you um, are in a licensed state, we have um, several people here who can make sure that all your continuing education gets submitted. If you need a logo, uh, maybe your wife designed your logo, and uh, you want to, you still want to work with that brand, but you want it to be to look professional, to look like a Fortune 500 company designed it. Um, we have um, two great logo designers here, three brochure designers here. All that design work is free, so um, they'll work with you and build you a great inspection business logo and brochures. You can order custom now books. The design on the on the covers is free. We um, don't charge any extra for customized. Now that you've had a home inspection book, they're like our maintenance books. Sure, we have sure. a podcast room, believe it. If you want to make your own podcast, you can do it just like you do. Put on your website. We have an entire um, set with uh, teleprompters and lighting and sound to make your own commercial, your own online video commercial. That's free as well. Man, I need classrooms. <laughs> we have showers here if you wanted to stay all night because the place operates 24 um, 7. And then we have the House of Horrors, which is just a, a fabulous training tool. Also, if you'd like, after you go through the House of Horrors and learn um, everything for the whole day, you can go through it again with us following you with the camera. 
and you can make your own little uh, commercial saying, hi, I'm Preston Sandlin, and I'm here at the, the House of Horrors, and I'm going to show you some of the things that you might not find on a, on an inspection unless you hire me. And then you can go through and, and point out a few things because the House of Horrors is not only just a training facility, but it's also a movie set. Right. So right. we have cameras set up for you, lighting for you. And the reason it's a movie set is because we use this entire house as um, a movie set for our training uh, courses. Right. So a lot of our training courses um, are su are supported with um, video online. Because a lot of our members, they like to learn by book. A lot of them like to learn by text online. And a lot of them like to learn uh, sort of hands-on. And um, we're also able to bring in subject matter experts from around the world, the best of the best, and videotape them doing inspections. And then that is really useful to our members. And, of course, all our online education and all our videos, they're all free. In That's fact, awesome. we've made, this year we made all of our videos, nearly 400 training videos, free to the entire industry. You don't even have to be a member of Internachi. You don't have to like Nick or Rico, and you don't have to pay us anything. <laughs> you can just go to nachi.tv and enjoy them, and it's just really designed to make the profession better. Awesome, awesome. I'm going to check that out. I, haven't, I, I go on the site, but I, I just haven't been on it in a while. I was a member of it way back, you know, like when it was a membership thing, but wow, it's free now. Uh -oh. Yeah, nachi.tv is all free. So. Awesome. Well, I'm going to come out to Boulder, so if you're, uh, you're encouraging InterNACHI members to come out, right, and make that pilgrimage out. Oh, yeah, we're putting – there's probably 400 people go through here a month now. Awesome. From awesome. seven, eight different countries have gone, come here already. Well, cool. Well, that, yeah. leads, that leads me to my next question, Nick. Are you going to have a conference or something? It seems like, it seems like everybody's uh, having a conference or, or something. Or is InterNACHI, are you going to do one? Or, and I don't yeah, um, uh, on uh, – on this Thursday, we have a pretty big event, just a one-night event. The um, the local ASHI group is having their meeting here, and they're meeting with our local group, so they're having a dual event here. And then in January, we have um, Inspector Boost, which is a one-day event. You can come here, and you get to do all sorts of things that will improve your business and make it more profitable. You do it all in eight hours. Um, and then in March, we have a five-day uh, conference here. Um, two of the franchises in our industry have now um, booked their 2017 national conventions here. It's a large complex. It's 26,000 square foot. has everything, kitchens and showers and everything anybody would want. Um, and then we have one classes here. Uh, two of the largest home inspect national home inspection schools actually run their students through here for a day, and um, there's always something going on. We all do a lot of ancillary inspection training, too, in our classrooms. So we'll do radon, water, well flow, lead, septic, asbestos, mold, energy audits now, everything. Cool. Is uh, Billy, uh, Billy Borner, is he still planning? To, he was going to have something out there with... His group, is he yeah, no, no, playing? he came and, and visited. It was fun. So he got to see the whole place. Um, I know he was talking about doing something next year or something. He asked me if I would come. I said, sure. I, sure. I have yeah. talked to him in a while, but definitely got to make that trip. Well, Nick, I'm yeah, I mean, for our industry, our guys walk in and they see this enormous house built under a roof with all these defects. And, of course, it's all see-through. And it's not drywall or side sided or anything. Right. Um, when they look at it, it's all, I mean, their jaws drop. It's almost like they're looking at the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> and then we turn them loose. And they just right. have just so much fun in there, it's hard to get them out. <laughs> That's cool, man. That's cool. Well, um, I'm going to switch it up just a little bit, Nick. What's your best advice? Because I know a lot of guys at different levels listen to this. But what's the best advice you would give to someone just getting into the home inspection business to be successful? Well, well, of course, I, you know, I'm biased, but I think join InterNACHI. And I would do things in a basic one-two order. The first step is education and training and get yourself, um, get your competency level up first. Become right. a good inspector first. 
And I think the efficient way to do that, of course, is by coming here, even for a few days. And then the second thing is um, to market. Get your business success and marketing um, programs running full blast. And don't stop when you get busy. So many times I hear my own members say, well, I don't need any marketing. My calendar is full. (laughs) Um, I'm booked up. And then I try to explain to them, the purpose of marketing isn't to just get busy and get more work. They said, they don't, we don't need any more work. I said, well, it's, that's not the purpose of marketing, to get you more work. Because you can only do so much work as a home inspector. Right. There's only so much light in a day, and there's only so many of you. Right. The purpose of marketing is so that you turn down work. And hmm. once you're turning down one out of three jobs, um, what will happen is you'll, your stomach will be able to handle you going to your fee schedule and raising your prices. <laughs> good, the man. purpose of marketing really is to increase margin, not to right. cause you to work harder. Right. So a lot of people say, well, I don't, have a, I don't need any marketing. I'm busy enough. Um, to me, they just don't understand what marketing, the purpose of marketing is. The purpose of marketing is to make money, not to make yourself more work. Right, right. No, I, I, I love it. I love it. In fact, that's why, you know, I have a multi-inspector firm, and that's why I I tell them that's my recruiting, you know, one of my big recruiting things is, you know, we market 24-7 because a lot of times, and there's nothing wrong with being a one-man shop, but a lot of times the, the, the struggle is they go out and market, they get busy doing the inspections, and then they stop marketing, and then, you know, real estate agents get out of the business. They, they're, you know, they're, there's a 30% turnover in that business every year. And then all of a sudden their phone stops ringing, and now they have to go out and market. And then they're like on this roller coaster up and down because they're not consistently marketing. You know, I, but I, I like the way you explained it. That, that's pretty awesome. Um, what Now, I know you told me about some of the awesome things you're doing. Anything else you've got coming in or not you're doing, uh, you're planning for 2017? Well, we plan on buying more houses. We started a We'll Buy Your Home Back Guarantee. It's a killer marketing tool, but not just for home inspectors, but for real estate agents. Okay. Real estate agents driving around with a, with a client who can't seem to pull the trigger and is hesitant. They can say, hey, use Preston Sam. He's got a We'll Buy Your Home Back Guarantee. And if anything goes wrong, go buy the whole house back, unwind the whole deal. It makes it really uh uh, a much easier transaction for the real estate agent it takes the pressure off the buyer. They're not making a mistake that could be that could ruin their lives financially. Right. And for the home inspector, it's the marketing tool of the century. I just did 100 uh, 110 real estate agents I talked to about the buyback program. I would say three minutes into it, they were starting to stand up. Oh, oh, wow. That's how attentive they were. No real estate agent wants to hear you go talk to them and tell them how thorough you are or that right. you're on time or that you do a, put pictures in your reports in full color or get the report done quickly. You're, you're supposed to do all that. Yeah. But when you start telling them that if, that they can tell their clients to put an offer in on that house, not to worry. And if any, if they don't want, if there's something that the inspector missed, we'll come in and buy it. So we've bought eight homes already. Um, sold six of them, kept one of them, one I'm closing in on um, next week, and we have to buy more because once we buy a home back, guess what we do? We use the agent that recommended the participating inspector to buy that home back, so she gets a second commission check. Okay. Then we turn around the next day and list the home with that very same agent. She gets a third commission check. Oh wow! Well, you can yeah. imagine what she does. She runs back to her real estate office to explain how this buyback program works. Awesome! Um, and that that home inspector ends up owning that office. Now, let me, that. let me ask you something, Nick. Do you? All right, let's say the buyer moves in, and you know whatever reason they're not happy, and, and, and the international inspector has the buyback program with you. You buy it back. Do you pay the buyers back what they paid for it when they closed on it, or is there like, is it less, or how does that work? I mean, we pay them exactly what they paid for the house, and we uh, pay all the real estate fees. Okay, that's so we usually pitch question. in a little bit more if they do a few things for us. 
For okay. instance, if they'll do a little video for us, we'll send a camera crew down there, and that video can be um, then given to the inspector, the participating member, so that he can use it for marketing purposes. We'll throw another grand at him, or maybe even two grand, if they'll okay. do a nice video. If they'll write a reference letter. If they'll do a few other things to help that particular inspector out, I mean, the, the, the whole purpose of the buyback program is to take a very negative thing where a consumer is so upset with the purchase they made that they're ready to damage everybody on social media, sue the inspector, sue the real estate agent for negligent referral, file right. insurance claims, all that stuff. We take a situation like that and we turn it all around, completely upside down. So in the end, that consumer becomes a mouthpiece for that inspector, the real estate agent can't believe she ends up with three commission checks. Yeah. The real estate office she works for all starts using that inspector. The inspector gets tons of business. So we take a very, very negative and turn it into a very, very positive. And our damage is on our end. We have to flip a house. So we usually you lose a little money, um, but that's okay. And seven of the eight properties we bought, there was nothing wrong with them. The right. homeowner just had buyer's remorse. Right, and, they, and they're free to complain about something, and we'll buy their house back and unwind it all. Um, no, that's a good deal all the way around. Yeah, it's a win-win yeah, win for everybody. Yeah, you answered my question because I'll be honest. My fear of that was that somehow you bought it for less. That was my fear. No. I, I didn't. And then, you know, and I was no. thinking they're already pissed off for some reason. <laughs> you know, whatever. No. They're already, no. Uh, so you paid all, all of our clients, are, we make them super happy. Okay. And we you know, technically we're actually paying a little bit more for the house. Right. And then we lose our shirt on them. I mean, we just lost our shirt on a condo in Florida. Um, probably lose twenty five, thirty grand on it. But that thirty grand is is cheap money compared to what we do. We save right. an entire member's career. We right. make it right. from essentially being destroyed because when a situation like that happens, their career is often ruined. We take it and make them um, a very wealthy home inspector. Probably the best thing you could do in this world is uh, is, ha is miss something on an inspection and be a participating member because when we go in there and buy that house back, you end up with a lot of free marketing, a lot of goodwill, and a real estate office that, that uses you forever. Awesome. Now, is that – I remember at one time I talked to you about it. Is, is it $5 per house or is it about is it that? Yeah, the $5 covers unlimited marketing. What I mean by that is, like, you could email me and say, hey, send me a 1,000 buyback brochures, custom. Send them to me, shipping included, and we ship it to them. Okay. So um, that pays for handling all the marketing of the program, which really helps our members. It's also a very consumer-friendly uh, program, and it's also a program that the agents love. In fact, now we have a um, best-selling agent in Denver demanding it on everyone, doing videos on TV about it and everything. And it's a really good system. I think that eventually um, all real estate transactions will, if I don't do it, somebody's going to do it, um, will allow you to unwind them. Right, right. Nobody, you, can, you can buy a car and drive it home or test drive it and you don't like it. You can unwind it. Um, you'll be able to one, unwind a real estate transaction. And it really well, makes the house sell better. Well, and you know well. what? I think it would help you too, like if you got a crazy person, um, you know, that wanted you to pay some outrageous thing for some repair, but yet you offered to buy the house back. And even if they said no or whatever, I mean, if you go to court, they're going to say, look, the guy offered to buy your house back. I think you would, I mean, that would be an out for you. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Uh, we partnered and now we own half of a an insurance company, and that's the idea. I mean, our we're not going to have these big claims anymore in our industry. This nonsense about inspectors suing, uh, getting sued um, for a lot of money, that'll end. Yeah. Because we'll just uh, take the product back and give you back all your money. Right, Which means right. there's no damages. You have to prove four things to prevail in court, and the last one is damages. If you can't right. prove damages, you don't, get a, you don't get a judgment. Yeah, if I can so, just re um, rewind it, you don't have to pay that. $50,000 you say that we missed, and everybody's happy. So, no, it's a smart Everybody thing. Everybody be happy. Yep. Well, well, Nick, speaking of the realtors and relations with that, 
Tell us a little bit about uh, what you do with uh, Realtor CE. I know you have some things where home inspectors can offer Realtors free CE. What's that all about? Yep, so in 40 states now, a real estate agent can get all the continuing education that they need to keep their real estate license conveniently online at no charge forever if they know an InterNACHI member. The InterNACHI member just give them a card. That card gets them access to free continuing education. That continuing education is inspection related, so it helps the real estate agent learn about the inspection business. Um, which helps us a lot. It also promotes that particular member um, a lot, which is very helpful to him or her. The marketing cards that um, they, the home inspectors can hand out to the real estate agents to give them this uh, access to all this free continuing education that they need, those cards are also free. The shipping is free. So you can't beat it. No, Awesome. And this is, uh, I, I know it's right on the InterNACHI site. What, what tab is that under? Is that, uh, you know, page? Oh, my goodness. I have no idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> NACHI.org slash benefits um, okay. is where you want to go find everything that's free. Um, it's my favorite four-letter F word, F-R-E-E. <laughs> every, like every InterNACHI member's benefit starts with the words free. Awesome. Um, that's good stuff. Well, Nick, um, I know I'm... I mean, bear with me here for a second because you're a really good marketer. So I know that uh, you, you can go along with this. When I was at the uh, the conference that we saw each other, I was presenting, and a big part of my presentation was about the uh, six principles of persuasion. Dr. Robert Cialdini, you, you ever heard you know his book Influence? Um, and no, even, I don't. I can't read very well. Hey. <laughs> Well, I promise you, you, you you're going to go right along. You'll 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 agree with these. Um, what I'd like to do, if it's all right, is um, go through them. And with your help, I want to see if there's a way. This is sort of what I did in my presentation that this can be applied to home inspectors. And I'll give you a quick background. Uh, Dr. Robert Cialdini um, is a professor at uh, Arizona State, and what he did was he went in and studied with like the best salesman in all different, you know, areas and wanted to know, you know, what made some guys successful at selling and marketing and others not. And he basically came out with six principles. And the first one, uh, well, I'll just go through them real quick and then back up to them. Reciprocation was number one. Number two is social proof. Number three is commitment and consistency. Number four is liking, no like and trust. Number five is authority. And number six is scarcity. And when I gave my presentation, I used number five as your master inspector. Like when you certify a master inspector that your clients are looking for authority. And when they see something like that, you know, it's like we, we all respond to police because we see the badge. You know, it's that authority, and that's one thing. Uh, that was one example I gave them. Um, I, I wanted to go to the fir- back to the first one, like the law of reciprocation, you know, I do something nice for you, you do something nice for me. You know, it's kind of like you keep putting the good out there or you keep doing nice things. It's just a human nature for people to do something nice back. Can you think of a way that a home inspector could use reciprocation in mar- their marketing or with some of the international well, products? I mean, they can. That's the problem, and it works. That's the problem. I just don't like it. Oh, really? I don't like that, relationship really marketing. I never liked, I never did like relationship marketing. I just think it's too inefficient. So for me to, for my success, um, to rely on people liking me and my smile and the nice things <laughs> I do for them is just, um, well, for me, I, I, have the, I have the personality of a cinder block. So first of all, it's not going to work for me anyway. <laughs> Second of all, I just feel it's too inefficient and it, and it works. That's the problem. But it also, caps you in a sense because unless you're ready to do real marketing um your relationship marketing is a cul-de-sac you're going to come down to the end of it one day and it's not going to go anywhere else for you you can imagine how absurd it would be if i tried to build internachi this powerhouse that's operating all over the world 17,000 due paying members in in north america if i tried to do that by delivering everybody bowls of candy Right. Um, it would be ridiculous. 
So um, I'm not a fan of relationship marketing, and I'm really sad that it works really well to a degree <laughs> because it sends a lot of people down to dead end. It's my opinion. Right. right. I, I think you eventually, if you really want to make a lot of money in life, you have to revert back to traditional marketing. I don't even know who the uh, CEO of Coca-Cola is, but I'm drinking a Coca-Cola right now, and I'm going to have one tomorrow too. <laughs> so, and they do a lot of marketing, and I don't feel it. I don't feel I have to know anybody or like anybody to um, purchase their products. Right. Well, I think I think essentially what you're saying is relationship marketing doesn't scale. I mean, it'll work to a point, but then you max out. You you, you can't. At some point, it just doesn't scale. You max out. It, you know. it doesn't. If you can't scale a business, you're going to be working hard on it forever. Right. But I do uh, want to add something with the reciprocation of it. I think I think what you talked about earlier by um, you doing things for the realtors where they can get their CE for free or write it free, I mean, that's doing something really nice for them. And basically, you're bringing value, um, I think. And if you bring value to them, you know, sooner or later, they're going to probably think, well, you know, my other home, the only guy I've been using for an inspection has not been doing that kind of stuff for me. I need to get this guy some business. You know, would you agree Yeah, there's also, we also have some tricky things we do with that. So the real estate agent um, and the inspector are connected together through InterNACHI's system. Right. So when you give that card out with your InterNACHI ID number, um, the real estate agent at the end of the class is given a congratulations by the inspector who gave her the card while the inspector is asleep at night. He doesn't have to worry about it. So he may not be um, thinking it's a scalable gift to give out, but Internachi is doing it for him or her um, yeah. while he or she is asleep. Right, right. Um, I, I have to ask you this, Nick. Going back to when you were a home inspector in Philadelphia and you were killing it, doing two a day, you start out, but I mean, you were wearing yourself. You were killing it and killing yourself at the same time. Um, what did you do to market at that point? I mean, what? Just, I mean, and I know you've probably gotten a lot better since then, but I'm, I'm curious. What did you do to build your business when it was just you doing inspections in Philadelphia? Well, so back then, um, digital cam. You know, this is going back a long way. Digital right. cameras just came out. In fact, I have that actual digital camera in the inspection museum. One of the things we did here at the uh, complex is we built an, an, an entire museum dedicated to the home inspection industry. We have the first uh, plumbing code books. We have the first inspection book from the 1920s. Wow. We have um, the first um, battery-operated flashlight from 1898. We have the first infrared camera. You used to have to keep it cold in, in liquid nitrogen on a backpack to bring it to a house to inspect. Oh um, in gosh. today's money, it's probably a quarter million dollar infrared camera. So we created an entire museum here, um, which is kind of fun. And my, and my camera, an old Canon camera, which is a digital camera, but we started to do digital photos back in the day. Um, awesome. That worked really well. But, um, you know, we set up uh, systems in our in our organization. So I had three other crews besides mine. We had four crews. And those three other crews were, um, in, a, in effect, partners. So each one of those guys running those crews, their, um, their pay would be based on how well that crew is doing, and not just in terms of gross revenue, but in net margin. Right. So we had simple um, – I, I love mathematics. Um, um, I'm a mathematician, so I built just algorithms that allowed them to constantly calculate what their paycheck was going to be at the end of two weeks, uh, depending on what work they did and how efficiently they did it. Well, so, that's also remember, I'm not interested in I – don't, I don't care what a person grosses. It means nothing to me. I only well, care what a person is able yeah, to net. Yeah, yeah. yeah you have that. to have gross income first. So my recent book I wrote, which is called Stacks, uh, A Home Inspector's Guide to Increasing Gross Revenue, that's a key compart component to getting net revenue. You have to have gross revenue first, but then you can't just churn that money year after year. 
just to right. figure out how to extract right. um, net profit out of it. And I just don't think relationship marketing is efficient enough for me right. to, uh, to to find a path to wealth. Right, right. Um, I like the way you were saying you built the cruise and then it was based on that. That that's a scalable model too because you can you can do it again and again and again. And I mean, really, if you think about it, that's how all the great businesses were built. You know, McDonald's, Starbucks, everything. It's got to be scalable where you can you know do it, do it again, do it again, do it again. But if you if you can only do it one time, you don't you don't you don't have a scalable business. I mean, you just right. you don't have a scalable business. Well, I just got like one or two more questions, Nick, and I'll let you go. I know you've got a lot to do. Um, what would you say the top three mistakes that home inspectors make? If you if you had to pick three, what would you say are the top three mistakes? Well, I would say not adopting um, marketing systems. In other words, they do marketing, but they're those marketing um, that marketing isn't. Um, isn't found within a system that they developed. They just do it haphazardly. Right. And that'll work, too. I mean, all marketing is marketing, right? Right. But I see on Facebook people doing all sorts of crazy things that take up a lot of their time. Um, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't do any of it. I would stop doing any marketing that takes up a lot of your time because it, you're just that time could be more efficiently used making systems that market you. Right. If you have systems in place that automatically market you all day long, you don't have to go to some real estate office and bring them some kind of donuts <laughs> and stand up in front of them like a schmuck and tell them about this and that. And I just <laughs> think that's just a big – I mean, it works. Don't get me wrong. But I think it's just, it's just sending you down the wrong path. I've been a have for automated long. systems with quality products, just like Internet. I mean, if you want to know how to do run a home inspection business, look at how to run Internet. I mean, Internet right. you know, does a lot of things that are all automated. As soon right. as we do something twice, I almost have a screaming fit here at Internet so that no one ever does it a third time. If it works once and it works twice, we better not do it a third time because by the time we get to the third time, we better have a system in place where it's already doing it for us. Right, right. Um, so I try to systemize everything. That would be one mistake I think inspectors make. Um, the second one I would say is probably they're, um, they don't take risk. They have an aversion to risk. I love risk. I love, <laughs> I love risk because the profit you can generate from taking risk um, is huge. Right. And it way offsets the cost of managing that risk. So a lot of people won't do this, won't try that, won't, you know. Well, the idea isn't to decide whether something is risky or not. That is not the question any home inspector should be asking themselves when they're thinking about doing a marketing program or a buyback program or testing for mold or anything. All right. The question they should be asking themselves is, is the cost of managing this risk less than the profits that are going to be generated from taking it on? Right. If the answer is yes, you should do it. So right. that's probably another big mistake I see home inspectors making. Um, the last one is that the, unlike other industries, we have to be very professional when it comes to our marketing. Mm -hmm. And you may say, why? Well, if I'm a contractor and I'm marketing a deck or something like that or my deck building business, I'm marketing to consumers and, and other people. But in our industry in particular, there's two things that really require us to have professional-looking and professionally designed marketing. The first is much of our marketing is going to be toward real estate agents who are in what business? The marketing business. That's right. all they do is market. So right. they know good marketing when they see it. They might right. not know a good inspector when they see it, one, but they know good marketing and they know professionally – professionally designed marketing pieces when they see them. So you have to get on their level or even impress them with that because that's one of your targets. Right. Um, the other th reason you have to have really great marketing pieces is because they are sort of previews of the product you produce. We don't produce dishwashers. 
we produce written reports. Right. And written reports are um, are thought are are looked upon in the same way that your brochure is. So if you design some flyer at home with your spouse, print it on an inkjet printer and pass it out, <laughs> um, people are going to assume that your inspection report is probably similar in quality. Right. right. But that's a- actually a great advantage because that means if you produce a really high-quality brochure for color on nice paper, designed by professionals and pass that out, they'll also think that your inspection report is going to be similar to that in terms of quality. Right, right. So So for those two reasons, I think inspectors make the mistake of undervaluing uh, the importance of um, professional design. That's why I'm in a room surrounded by designers uh, much of my day. It's important to our industry. If I was in another industry... I wouldn't need graphics artists and and these high-end designers. They would be unnecessary. Right, right. No, it it makes perfect sense. Um, I'm going to ask this last last few questions. This might tie in together what we're talking about. If if it's a new inspector, they're new, and obviously if they listen to this, they're going to realize how important the marketing is. Um, What does Internox mean? Offer, I mean, and I, I know you know, but I mean, I'm presenting it out there to everybody else. What, if, if, let's say that I'm Joe New Home Inspector, and I listen to this, and I like what you're saying, and I want to join Internachi. How can Internachi help me with my marketing, or what, 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 what should I do joining Internachi? You know, first, just just the cliff notes, I guess, to, to give well, more. Aside, aside from the marketing, right off the bat, having unlimited free access to all the education and training in every every way possible, on everything possible, the best of the best, the most robust courses ever, all approved, there is no deterrent to you to becoming really competent. This nonsense about, you know, an inspector isn't competent enough. Why? There's no excuse anymore in our industry, thanks to Internet. Right. Right. There's just no excuse for an incompetent inspector. So aside from that, putting education and training aside, with marketing, the first thing you have to do, I would say, is you have to legally procure your identity, your brand identity. And once you do that, then the cornerstone of all your marketing is your logo. We've designed 6,000 logos here, absolutely no charge. These designers are, create logos that are just as good as any Fortune 500 companies. So the cornerstone of all your marketing is is that logo which represents your brand. You have to get that first. Right. Once you get that, everything builds out from there. Your websites, your brochures, your business cards, your truck wrap, and on and on and on. Good, good stuff, good stuff. Well, Nick, is there anything uh, that I, I didn't ask you that I, I should have asked you or anything top of mind that, uh, that would be beneficial to the listeners? Well, I would, if they don't want to join Internachi, I would ask them to email me because what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them a free membership anyway. Wow. So <laughs> um, any of your listeners who are not an Internachi member can email me. And it's just uh, fastreply, F-A-S-T-R-E-P-L-Y, at nachi.org, N-A-C-H-I dot O-R-G. I'll give them a free membership to Internachi for six months. No contract, no anything. That's all. Awesome. Try it. They can go through all the benefits. The least they can do is take our courses and um, and become competent and learn a lot of things. Right. At the end of six months, if they don't want to um, continue, it's no problem. Well, and you but, know, and that's awesome, Nick. And you know, I joined like a hundred years ago, <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, my thought was, I'm going to join this. I'm going to take all the courses. I'm going to download all stuff, and then I'm going to quit. And I haven't quit yet. <laughs> well, we just keep coming up with new stuff. I mean, we have 41 staffers here. 
but just keep producing new stuff every day. So it's pretty hard to hit that cancel button. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah we do we do a lot of work for our members. It's a great staff here. And so yeah. I, we, we have a really high renewal rate. Remember, the inspection industry is full of inspectors. Those guys are tough. They inspect for a living. That's what they do. Right. So I don't have some magic wand that I wave over the entire industry's head to get 17,300 guys to join and renew year after year with Internachi. Right. Um, we have to earn that due, those dues every year um, because the way you build up a, a trade association's membership is through renewal. And the way you get someone to renew is you have to do a good job year after year after year. You have to produce for them. And so I would say the biggest um, biggest thing I could say about Internachi is it got so big, and that says a lot in this industry. No, you're right. It is a tough, a tough group. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, you've been a good, a good group, but you know, it's a tough guy, man. And they're not, they're no nonsense. Um, so let me just to recap, uh, and that's awesome that you offer that for uh, anybody who listens to this uh, free six month membership if they. Email to fastreply at internachi.com. Is that correct? At nachi.org. At nachi.org. Awesome. Awesome. Yep. And obviously they can check uh, check out uh, internachi.org. Um, yep. Check out, check all out on Facebook. And uh, you're welcome to come up to you if, if you're at a conference or something to come up and talk to you. I'm sure you don't mind. Yep. And the complex is always open to everybody. They can come visit. They don't even have to have an appointment. And they can enjoy everything we have to offer for free, as well as the House of Horrors that can spend all day in there if they like. We have two certified master inspectors on staff constantly to help them through the house, to answer questions, show them um, all the defects that are within it. And uh, if any of the veteran inspectors here, I don't want to leave them out who are already members of Internachi. If you want to become a certified master inspector, email me as well. I'll give you a great discount on it. It's the most powerful marketing tool I've ever come up with. Most of the marketing tools I've invented over the past 25 years do not work. <laughs> They're total failures. <laughs> what, you, what, what is left really works well. You've got to rid of everything that doesn't work. Awesome. And there's nothing like those three little words. Consumers immediately know what they mean and have an idea oh. of what it means to be a certified master inspector. So awesome. um, there's nothing like it. Awesome. One last thing I thought of, Nick, before I let you go. Let's say I'm planning to make a pilgrimage out there to uh, Boulder because I want to go through all this. Um, but I'm kind of a little bit of a planner. I mean, I don't want to just walk through the front door and say, here I am. I mean, yeah, how would, would I call to, you know, confirm and say, hey, I'm coming, yeah, you know, I just want to make sure you guys are open. Can you sign me up? Or I mean, what, what can I do just to make sure I'm not, you know, I'm not going to fly out there and, you know, you know what I'm saying. I, I'm a planner. Yes, sir. So you have two options. You can go to uh, natchee.org forward slash school and mm -hmm. look at the events that are there, and maybe one of those events are enticing enough for you to go to it while one of those events is going on. Um, right, right. The other thing you could do is just email me and tell me when you're coming, and we'll be here. If you want, Tell us what you also want to do, too. If you want us to film you and make you a, a nice little video commercial while you're here, um, we'll do that for you as well. Awesome. That is awesome. Well, and for all the listeners, it's going to be a tax write-off because it's obviously a business <laughs> in training, and, you know, that, that's just a win-win all the way, man. I'm, I'm going to have to make that trip. <laughs> Please do. All right, Nick. Well, I'll let you get back to your wife, and uh, I just want to say I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us tonight. All right, Preston. Good night. Thank you. Uh, all right, Trip. Uh, uh, Nick, have a good one now. Bye. Bye. Guys, I want to talk to you about a way that you can make more money and, uh, and less liability. Actually, no liability. Um, <clears throat> inspectnewhomes.com. Inspectnewhomes.com. Uh, what happened is uh, one of the largest builders in our market came to us and wanted us to do all the pre-inspections on all of their new homes. But <clears throat> they didn't want us to use just our normal reporting 
uh, software. They wanted a, a system set up specifically for a builder so that they could do quality control on their subs, and they could also advertise that all their homes were inspected by a third party. So we came up with this software, this system, a website, a whole turnkey thing where you can take this and take it to your, your builder and show them how you can save them time, save them money, reduce the adversarial relationship. Um, and it's a whole new market. You will not have to compete with other home inspectors for this market and it reduces the uh, adversarial relationship with the builder and best of all there's no liability so uh i'm, I'm telling you it is great uh it's phenomenal uh I, i'd love to tell you the amount of money we've made with this system a lot um but uh you know you're welcome to uh check it out inspect newhomes.com or on the successful home inspector podcast you can uh, there's a tab on there as well all right uh if you would like to make m- some more money with almost no liability check out inspectnewhomes.com <laughs> Thanks for checking out the Successful Home Inspector podcast. You can find show links at thesuccessfulhomeinspector.com. Check out the website for special offers, information, and other resources. Thanks again for listening to the Successful Home Inspector podcast. And remember to check back for new episodes. The Successful Home Inspector podcast is brought to you by Preston Sandlin and Home Inspection Carolina.